at customer service and it's a uh, it's pretty pretty nice platform also a montreal company called um i can i can send it to you right now it's called live scale okay um and they just opened up their platform for the next 30 days for free and i think they have something like unlimited um here i'll i'll send you the link right now let me go uh, back to try and use them i i started with them uh well i i like started setting it up and then i was like you know what? i spent too much too much time and effort to get caster going that okay. i don't need more than one restreaming service cool and this if, if these guys are from montreal let's uh whoops yeah keep it local i cannot copy paste this that's crazy How have you been doing? Good to catch up. Well, I was supposed to be uh, somewhere in the Caribbean right now instead uh, of no. here. And uh, actually, that was uh, quite an adventure on Sunday because, um, yeah, I should have uh, left before all this kind of blockade. So when I went to Dorval uh, Sunday morning, uh, the SPVM uh, asked me gently uh, to go back to my home. Oh, really? They were letting in people only for those who have to go back home, which home is not here in Canada. And they were letting in people that were grabbing people coming in. So yeah, that was Sunday morning. That was my last chance to get a flight with Interjet to go all the way back to Mexico. Because I tell myself like I could work remotely for the few clients that I accept to have like kind of agile training by Zoom. Right. Because uh, I will say like 90% of my of my business right now is shut down Okay. on, on the Agile lounge side, yeah. And uh, so I just do some kind of one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching with Zoom at half price or for free at some point. So so no, I'm not generating in that. So, so I tell myself like I should go at least be in quarantine next to the Caribbean Sea and the Yucatan. Yeah, you know? I know. With my girlfriend being from Tahiti, ah. it was like, oh, why didn't you just go to Tahiti and stay there instead. But uh, yeah, it's certainly nice being quarantined on the beach, but you just don't want to give those whales coronavirus because then we have a bigger economic problem. What do you mean? No, I don't think you can give whales or anything. Coronavirus is just a human, human thing. Yeah, it's but, a uh, human thing. And actually uh, one of my friends shared with me an interview back, back in 2014 then a lot of people were laughing at her because uh, in 2014 with uh, it's Arthur, it's a, it's a French epistemology, uh, epidemiologist and uh, coronavirus exists. Uh, it's been a while. This is not just, it's just, just a new version of the uh, mutating virus right now that we have. Right. I'm not saying that this is not a real virus, but I think uh, we're globally overreacting. And I think some, um, some elites are taking advantage of it to push some agenda. And every time we try to have this kind of voice, ah, let me uh, admit someone here. Bonjour, Monsieur Jolie. Good afternoon. This is one of my cousins. Mm -hmm. Because this still a check-in of, um, it's a check-in, but on Thursday though, I'd like to do something a, a bit more professional with uh, people from the business agility community and so on. I don't know if you saw the, and if we could use the pickle, uh, that would be nice. Yeah, that's I'm, on this Thursday, you said? This Thursday at 2 p.m. because I, I try to have European as well. But that might change because uh, that's kind of curious. If I do it at 7 p.m., of course, we miss all the, the European people. And if I do it at 2 p.m., right now, a lot of people tell me they're busy. Mm. Because some people still work, apparently. Uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, but remotely. Uh, so that's kind of, uh, it's, it's a curious uh, paradoxal time. Yeah. But yeah, so I, I never want to go into conspiracy, but that's kind of funny right now that uh, everybody who try to question things, even to a normal basis, 
they are hashtagging COVID yet. Mm. So you cannot oh, question I see that. Yeah, COVID yet. Yeah, that's that's for tomorrow uh, discussion. If people, because I'd like to give a space to to anyone, because like this is very dangerous. Like the pad that we could use something, especially when it's touched the health, an epidemic, or something like this. So oh, it's like we cannot say anything. No, no, no. We, we could still question things. And, hmm. By the way, Sunday, I did a long, long walk here in Verdun and La Salle. And there were more people out there than a normal kind of Sunday. Really? It was just one week of self-confinement. Uh, really, yeah. Uh, and I think it was so beautiful. Uh, it was cold, but it was a beautiful day. Mm -hmm. So more cyclists than usual for that kind of weather. More people in rollerblade, more people in... I would say like 50% of, of us, I will include myself in it, kind of respect that kind of uh, physical distancing. Yeah. But I was crazy to see that many people out there. Um, kind of. And it was nice to, everybody was uh, cheering up at each other. Right. Because it's that like, was, hey, this might be the last time I'm seeing you in a while. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. That was, was great. Yeah, I went for a run to the uh, top of Mont Royal, and I wanted to just get out because, I mean, I guess they are closing it now. So what? Yeah, I guess all of the parks are closed. Um, <laughs> I thought it was a conspiracy theory when I heard that the first time. Yeah, well, there was like a lot of people hiking, mm -hmm. and I like I remember running and. I just like was going past people and wouldn't have normally thought about this in any other daily life, but uh, someone like breathed out and I remember breathing in just like warmer air and I was like, oh, I just breathed in their air. Uh oh, oh, is that enough to get the coronavirus? Like, so just walking past people and I think that at least made me a bit nervous as well um so i feel like even though people are respecting their distance if you yeah. have that many people you're you're in the same general vicinity it still could be a problem uh, is it is it is it more uh, is it airborne as much as uh, the sars and the mers or is more like by the touching stuff and by like uh... i think uh, i mean it seems to I mean, granted we're being recorded right now here. Yes, we do. I'm actually record. I don't know. I didn't record from Zoom, but you're okay. live on Facebook, so probably. But I could delete it after. But it depends. I mean, like, what? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, um, I don't know. I feel. And like... on YouTube, it's only me. They don't see the the interaction. So. Ah, okay. Okay. So, but of course, you're live on Facebook. So. Okay. Oh, but in on YouTube, they only hear you. Yes. Interesting. Yeah, because again, I'm not using uh, what you suggest me to use, like uh, LiveScale or Callister. So probably Callister will be on all platform, including Instagram, IGN, and so on. Uh, but I'm not there yet. With only 60 subscriber, uh, mostly my best night was, I think, last Wednesday when I did it at 3 p.m. So uh -huh. I got a lot of Italian, Spaniard, and French. Okay. And uh, even my great Crystal, Mark Crystal, I know you're on YouTube, but please uh, look at the link to join us on Zoom uh, because we have. Est-ce uh, que tu Oui, je t'entends, Daniel. Je me bats avec mon antivirus, il bloque la, il me bloque la vidéo. Ah, c'est pas grave. Au moins, on t'entend. Moi, je pensais que. So, Chris, this is my cousin. He speaks more French. So, hold on a second. All and right. he, it's his first time into uh, Zoom. Enchanté. Antivirus is blocking, but but actually, au moins on peut t'entendre, Daniel. So that's the. Si toi tu nous entends, tu tu me vois tu? Je vous vois très bien, puis je vous entends très bien. Okay. Moi, je pensais que en fait tu avais euh, comment je pourrais dire, euh, tu avais bloqué ta vidéo pour ta privacy. That non, 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 je suis sûr. Je suis suréquipé, c'est ça qui arrive. Ah ah. Welcome to the little bird. Remove your mute, my dear. Ah. 
Yeah. Et voilà. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> you should put the, the YouTube on mute, Crystal. Hi, Crystal. Crystal, meet uh, Chris. Chris Ben. Hi, Crystal. Hello. And Daniel, uh, he's having some uh, technical difficulty, but at least he could join us. Uh, so that's great. And for me, it's a test too for my future Dare Real Agile uh, podcast or what have you. I realized though, Chris, that when I do my training um, with Zoom, even with up to 20 people, it's maybe now is because I'm streaming also on YouTube. So probably I'm using a lot. I'm asking a lot of my MacBook right now. Mm. And those, oh, hello, Ella. No, it's Willow. Oh, Willow, sorry. I don't see it like uh, mm. it's only a thumbnail. All right. So, um, so you were saying, Chris, that uh, they will shut down the Montreal. Oh, you heard that, Crystal? Uh, the Montreal Park will be uh, closed. And you were talking about, yeah, is it like airborne, this virus, or it's more like it, it will be left too long into surface? And so, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. But... They're saying now in the cruise ship, the whatever princess cruise ship, that they found that the virus was living up to 17 days 17. The after the ship was empty. So wow. it, it's, it's the people touching things in the parks, etc., benches, handrails on the stairs, things like that, picnic tables, yeah. Okay, so it's more with this, but because Chris, you had a point, like if we do jogging in parks and the warm air, could you explain it back again? Because that was interesting, like. Uh... Yeah, yeah, I mean, I don't even know if it's, if it's possible to get that, but just going on runs through the park and going past people, I, I would just be like going past and then you'd get the random whiff of hot air directly from someone's mouth. And now I'm more conscious of it than ever because it's like, oh, that could contain this deadly virus within it. And um, whether it is small enough to just be passed through breath or it needs to be sneezed. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not really sure about that and yeah it just uh i could see why even if it is like parks and people keeping their social distance it can still be a problem with just that number of people all in the same space mm. yeah. it increases the risk more people together no matter what is going to increase yeah. the risk even but about the funny thing now i know anita from paris she's not there but um She, she's a jogger, uh, like big time jogger, Iron Girl, uh, what have you. And all of a sudden, she said, like, especially on the Canal Saint Martin, uh, there were more people jogging all of a sudden. So that's the, that's the craziness or the paradox of it. Because the stay on thing seems to work at some point. But uh, as I experienced myself on Sunday on La Salle and Verdun, there were more people than usual. Uh, For the the context that we are in uh, even though the, the 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 positive aspect of it is people were actually cheering up at each other and explaining like cheering up also say i but say please keep your distance mm -hmm. so um so most of the people were like respectful like this like the the it was less tension than uh when it's not uh covid virus in the air <laughs> mm -hmm. i will say Except for some kind of group of, uh, of course, uh, people who are like uh, business as usual, and that, that's it. But uh, so, well, we'll see because uh, we we're still here in Montreal. I don't know for you in Cal uh, in Edmonton. It's still not forced. I not know yet. some, not yet. So that's the thing okay. because uh, because London just announced it today. They're locked down uh, like in Italia now which yeah. means that the only air you could breathe is from your balcony. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's been taught, well, if you, if you listen to even like Trudeau's announcement or here in Edmonton with the mayor Iverson talking, like they're all kind of using the same terminology and I don't want to say veiled threats, but they're all saying, hey, um, it's about to come to serious measures because people aren't complying or respecting best practices. 
So I think it's going to be coming in the next week. Yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. yeah. And this for I don't think is for the majority of us with respect con permiso is not that little because it, it if it will have been an Ebola pandemic let me tell you that will have been like something uh, because I don't because me for me it's the post coronavirus space of all business everything that I, I'm more and more convinced day after day from mainstream media as well as from alternative media from from out of view that the way that they they use those language or the veil language and stuff like it's incredible how much like They, they scare people at some point with that and mm -hmm. they're using it to kind of transform the way that we're going to interact together because i'm in, i'm in business agility so i know the drill mm -hmm. we sometimes use it with 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 vps and organization and with people and human resources that i prefer to call people and culture they're using it sometime within organization to bring agility scrum and lean thinking Now we do it at a large scale by using fear instead of using love. So it's kind of a, like individually or some community are bringing very good thing out of it. But it's kind of, for me, what I'm amazed, especially with my background in political science, I said political science, not politics. I'm really amazed on much like the, it's the wall. It's not just Quebec, Alberta, uh, Massachusetts, New York. It's, It's the entire planet. I would say like 80% of people are following those prescription. Mm -hmm. And now they will use the 20 rogue, 20% of rogue people to enforce something. This is like, for me, that's very scary. I don't know if you saw on the net because I'm not that much in social network beside my company, but right now, because I have spare time and when I work with Samuel, I, I could see things. And I start seeing like this kind of chart, you know, these uh, the chart with the X point in the middle. So they 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 put three uh, book into the circle. The first circle is of course uh, 1984. The second circle is Adolf Saxley, um, Brave New World, and uh, Ray Bradbury, uh, Fahrenheit uh, 551, and the uh, X spot, it's coronavirus. I don't know. Some people apparently feel like that. It's like being empathic to um, those people who are hypochondriac. I didn't. I don't want to be someone like that right now because it, it, poor them. Could you imagine those people who suffer of these kind of anxiety or or fear of getting something? Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't want to be in their shoes. And I think we we should give them a voice and we should give them like. Uh, We should comfort them. At the same time, when we start having the hashtag COVIDia for some COVIDia, I agree, those who are uh, actually uh, ordering the supermarket or stuff like this, and they just don't care about, because these are for me, it's, you just see in plain sight right now, the convert narcissist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, th those are the COVIDia. But the other who have a political or social questioning of things, They should not be put in the same basket because otherwise we're going to lose our democracy uh, under that virus. What do you say? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I think it's definitely a good point about like the, the germaphobes because this almost qualifies everything that they were, they're being like constantly washing their hands, like, and the agoraphobes, the people who are scared to go outside, like, now it reinforces those behaviors and i think that could definitely be even harder to overcome once the virus is over because then it's like all right well is it really done when do i know that it's done um it's it could certainly reinforce a lot of those anxieties that i think people have um And so, yeah, if, if you're a germaphobe and you take it to extreme lengths, now you can say, well, I told you so. And 
I don't know if that's necessarily the best thing to do. Nah. Hmm. Crystal? I worked with both of those. Like when I worked in mental health, especially in Montreal, when I worked in the um, with um, Projet Pal, and I've had clients who were both um, agoraphobic and OCD, like compulsive with germs, etc. And I'm just I'm just reflecting on it because neither of those, like I'm thinking of two specific people that I, I had living in my transition house for some point. And neither of them ever really looked outside of it into the whole society. It was like really just more of an internal thing. And it wasn't like, I don't think they would even, I think it would just be an internal process where they might be like, aha, I was right. But I don't think it's something that they would be like sh propagating as a belief, but that's just my, that's just something that popped into my head when you were talking about that. Um, but I do think that, yeah, it can totally exacerbate the problem with someone who's already living with those yes. um, concerns or those um, mental health complications. So. Yeah. And they, they don't really talk much about this. I don't know for you and Alberta, but uh, here, Chris, uh, the, the, the press conference every day, they talk about the elderly and the young. It's always like those and who travel not, or, the, sorry? Oh, I was gonna say, but also they talk about also like the immunocompromised people. Mm -hmm. Yes. They really don't talk about all the in-between. No. Yeah. Because for me, if, if I, if I have like the, uh, no, let's say that, uh, because I know, I, I know two social worker. I don't know if you remember, uh, Crystal probably is Claudia and Sylvie. And, uh, did you receive that warning as well, guys, on Zoom? On Zoom? What, just me or? Uh, it, it paused for a very brief second. I don't know. I thought, thought that was a lag. Yeah, it's been three times in two days that I receive uh, this kind of warning for my uh, internet slowing nope. down. Okay. Oh, uh -oh. you're getting throttled? I don't know. But you're running so many beautiful things at the same time. Maybe, maybe. But I like to have music in the background. Is the music disturbing you guys, or it's uh, nah, I kind really of smooth jazz for now? I like the background. Speaking of, it's a nice like orange theme you got kind of going throughout. Yeah. <laughs> I try to cut down on orange. I see my life in orange. Uh, <laughs> After that great French singer, like, see, uh, la vie en rose, moi, c'est la vie en orange. <laughs> uh, even my coffee maker, it's orange. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of, uh... All right. So I uh, just missed the part. Like, uh... ah, yes. Yeah, so, yeah. So at least uh, doing volunteering. So, because I, uh, all of a sudden, like, uh, all the people who work, uh, especially in the healthcare here in Montreal, they are all subject to, uh, be assigned uh, whatever the uh, public uh, public care officer will ask them to do, and uh, they truly need help for stuff. So for me, and I still don't understand why uh, we talk about remote work for for all of those who are answering call into those specific phone lines. Uh, they, they should be able to do it from home. And, and at some point, like when I was speaking with two of my friends who are social worker, um, for those who have to be on site, that's understandable. But like someone like me who are, is out of war type of say, I should be able from home to at least do all the phone calls that they need to do. But for some goofy reason, if I, and I will do it voluntarily, they asked me to go to the CLSC to do this. Why? It's, okay, I'm not at risk, but even if I'm not at risk uh, on both both ways, I could still get it, right? So I don't see like, uh, I could do all those phone calls and emails from home. I think it's the productivity question. Cause my brother had this same, I had this conversation with my brother because his law firm, um, just was right before all of this hit was talking about, well, what do we do for um, our 
employees, like how do we still serve our clients, but let's prepare on if we have to do this all from home. Mm. And they actually were in like researching and it was going to cost them, I think something like $80,000 to um, supply laptops, uh, all these things for their legal aid, like their legal assistance, all these things so that the work could still get done so they could serve, because it's like a huge law firm. Um, and, but they, you know, so, but then the long-term, you know, my brother was saying, you know, but it's kind of hard because obviously they're more productive when they, they're in the office. So it's really about like, they were trying to balance, well, what is the long-term like of us spending this money to support them? How much money will we lose in productivity? But however, we also have to look at the, the health of our employees and um, obviously healthy employees are more productive and you're not going to take as much of a loss. Also, if you have a whole shit ton of employees that get sick so or need to go on leave or whatever so it all you know but that's a conversation that they had a couple weeks ago yeah and he's working from home now I think they're all working his his business he had to go in on Monday to sign some checks or something and that was it and then he Mm -hmm. he's back at home so yeah but uh, and again I will say like it will depend on environment but uh, if you take call centers for example I don't know if you work guys in call centers before, but uh, these are very like, because back in the day, even before these pandemic things, subway, the tube, call centers, because call centers are like, you could have like 50 people in the same space with very like 24 inch space and and, and the headset is it's not sometimes like, they die. I remember Fido, Fido here in Montreal, it was like, it was the best LT call center because they have like 32 inch desk and they have their own headset. Hmm. But most of the call centers, even for the CAA, the, the, the car, uh, they don't. So I know these guys have to go to work in these kind of already bacteriologic or toxic or not that LT place. And, and with the technology, because I built a lot of call center in my past uh, business experience, doing like customer relation management, both technological and, and people. And I know if, if in 1999, in 2001, we could have people work remotely through call centers, could you please, after 20 years, it's probably even better than ever. I work in a project uh, for Desjardins two years ago, and everybody was working from home already for the les assurance insurance so so i i don't think and i i saw a lot of people like uh, complaining for the tim horton for example uh, even if i i don't know here now if of course the uh, the dining room is closed but you could still go for a pickup or a drive through mm-hmm. and you saw most of the tim horton they still need about four people inside to to respond to this and they don't respect that distance they can't. Yeah. Can. No, they can't. In that environment, you cannot. You just can't. So for me, when I saw the list yesterday on the Quebec website of, of things shut down, I will have had all those like toxic environments such as Tim Morton, McDonald's. Like, why are you open? It's not even healthy food. I'm sorry. So like, mm-hmm. The grocery store, it's enough. For me, grocery store or any other even small business store, that could provide you uh, food, okay, with kind of uh, remote ordering and, and stuff like this. So those who had initiative even before any lockdown, I saw a couple of grocery here on uh, on Villemar. They said like, you call us or you order by messenger on Facebook, and you come and pick it up, and that's it. Mm-hmm. I mean, and uh, but and the SAQ, please, do you need to get drunk? Probably yes, but. That mm-hmm. will be shut down. <laughs> that's okay. I mean, that's okay. But I mean, like, I know, I know. What you mean. And even like the SQDC. Come on. So what is the SQDC? It's uh, for the um, the amp. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, it's, okay. Uh, it's like okay. Yeah, I don't know what, how, how you call it, Alberta, but we have like branches. It's all, it's all privatized. Oh, it's all privatized. So, yeah, just like the alcohol. Alberta. Here, it's all Alberta. <laughs> So there's no SAQ, all that, like there's no. No, here is like uh, the SQDC. It's the same thing as SAQ, but for pot. Yeah. Okay. I I have heard that they are like deeming that necessary business. And it's just like, 
It's crazy that there are still people, at least in the United States, who are in jail for nonviolent crimes caused by this, and now they're deeming it needed, yeah. like more so than like office supplies, for instance. Like, it's crazy those people who are just like, wait a second, I was arrested, and how many years later? Now this is like not going out during a pandemic. It's ridiculous. Yeah, like, because because if we take about like the the cannabis for health care, they already have their spot, right? So I think they still have their spot. So this is a, it's a necessity for someone to consume, uh, but because of his illness, that's another story. But the SQDC and SAQ, it's like uh, leaving the casino open. Uh, but I think Loto Quebec is kind of shut down right now. They left the casino open. No, 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 no. But I mean, oh. like, Loto Quebec take a long, long, long time. I think they, it's only yesterday night, you know, those kiosks where you could buy your Cisco 49 and so on. So they actually shut down right now. It was, but it could have been deemed essential, you know, because mm -hmm. these are voluntary type of income tax that the government could use. But anyway, for me, it's just curious that um, uh, Staple Depot, it's closed, <laughs> I think. As you mentioned, Chris, and yeah, so, but even though like uh, there, there were like a panel of discussion on this on the French CBC radio yesterday about the regulation of uh, les normes du travail, the, the the work regulation, where there's an article that give uh, the right and duty to um, an employee to ask not to work for some like uh, important reason. So apparently uh, now this is the kind of a dance in some kind of, uh, of places right now where like, like people like you, Crystal, you will have more than the right to request not to be uh, at work mm -hmm. because of your... Uh, All of my stuff. Yeah. Exactly. But I mean, I guess, sorry, so even in French, I'm not even... Uh, I try to... I, I prefer to let you explain than me uh, pointing <laughs> the, the wording on this. But the thing is, anybody who could be at risk with asthma, with whatever, uh, they could request it, and then they will have a leave of absence. Mm -hmm. But I cannot believe that there are still people struggling with that right now, and especially in that context. If it's so, uh, it's kind of so. It's physical distance. That's the thing. Not social distance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we are in a physical distance, but we're still enjoying a nice talk. And, uh, <laughs> and so on so you know so uh so when you when you said like uh, the wording crystal like even like when you hear the press conference and like two weeks ago dr aruba here in quebec was openly saying like uh, don't ask me to call the sq but nobody like catch it they catch is a portuguese uh, tartlet instead that was more funny of course it's funny but so me, I don't understand. And again, I was uh, listening to a doctor from, uh, from London uh, on the BBC. He was saying like, uh, we should, let, let's say, let's take the number here in Quebec. It's right now um, almost a thousand people. Of course, more they test, more they will have people positive. So it's not because uh, the pandemic is gaining. It's because like there's a lot of unknown Right. people well, right even, now so they're that's not the even able to keep up with testing so exactly they can but you know at la place des arts here they open a big tent uh you know like the quartier des spectacles mm -hmm. now you could go there and subway full of virus mm -hmm. <laughs> to be tested like so probably if i leave my house right now maybe i'm negative but i will catch it in the, in the tube <laughs> going yeah. there to be tested as well now but maybe i'm just kidding also, but, hmm? i don't know about in in Quebec, but here, like you do need a doctor referral to even go get tested. Uh, now they open it like for everybody. So really? They, yeah, they put tent on the uh, Place des Arts, uh, you know, like uh, mm -hmm. all around there. So you could go there, but of course you don't go there like, like me right now. Only if I will be uh, an hypochondriac or someone anxious, I will go, but I don't, I don't think I need to go. But a lot of because people- Because I don't have any symptom. I don't have any, what? A lot of people are still going to go, even if they don't have symptoms. I know. I know, but they have a first uh, kind of filter. They, they will ask if you have symptoms or if it's been like within 20 days that you came back. 
Uh, me, I came back from Mexico on March 4. Will I qualify? I don't think so. No, I not today. It's my last chance because mm -hmm. I came back from Mexico on the 4th. But, but again, Mexico, Mexico right now, it's one of the lesser country with, with concern with that. There's Russia, Singapore, because Russia and Singapore, they shut down their border on January the 15th. Smart. Didn't India yesterday or something, I think, did like a super extreme shutdown of things for 21 days, I believe? Like us? No, like, I think like hardcore. Um, I just saw it on CBC yesterday. I didn't read all, I didn't, I just saw the headline. Yeah, but here's the thing. When I did my Temascal in the Yucatan, there was an Indian couple freshly uh, arriving from India. So maybe I got it. <laughs> because because all this, uh, the, the Southeast Asia, and so, they've been sick since January. So they are on the curve like, they're high, they're ahead yeah. So this is this is the way that that's spread apparently, because right now in Europe and here there's no born coronavirus. It's all brought back from someone. Um, so the West Coast it was uh, all Asian country, and for us in Quebec it was everybody that came back from Italy and France in the last couple of weeks. Mm. So that was the root cause of, and then New York the same. New York it it like crazy twenty five thousand cases. New York yeah. State. And imagine all the people traveling in and out of New York, too. That's... Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. yeah. So, but it, is it... But again, I'm not sure about, like... Is it airborne, or it's more like it stays, and you touch something, and then you put your hands on your face, and here you get it? Unless someone sneezing uh, on you and your face, um, probably again. Well, it's I've heard it's just surfaces, but then I think it was CBC posted an article how they're doing tested and found that it can survive an aerosol form up to mm. however long. Mm. But I mean that that's all I saw about that. So they're really just touting that it's surface and like you know, getting too close and spitting on each other. So yeah, right. of course. And then it lives longer on surfaces like plastics, but apparently not as long on things like papers and cardboards. They're doing all these. Yeah. It's, mm. So that's why they're saying that takeout foods aren't like, aren't a huge concern because it's all like cardboard and paper. It's not a huge concern or it's it's, well, that's why they're still allowing a lot of that to happen because the even though with the sur the surfaces, it doesn't live as long on those surfaces or something. So, mm -hmm. um, I don't think that's that's probably one reason they haven't targeted those okay. types of takeout. Yeah. And how do you feel about like uh, will it last? Um, because apparently, like China is reviving right now because it lasts for about uh, three months. It's it, apparently it's a three month circle. So what it mean like here in Canada will be free about June? June, July. Even it depends how stupid people are going to be too. Mm. Right? If people aren't respecting the quarantines, the self isolation, the physical distancing, then it'll just continue. It'll prolong the curve, right? But but again, if I ask you, you, you were good in algebra and uh, in mathematics? Were you, Chris and Crystal? I was all yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> no. I, did, I, I did some numbering yesterday uh, with the uh, live website of uh, the O, the World mm -hmm. Health Organization, that they have the numbers, right? So, so. Mm -hmm. And I was calculating all of it. And uh, truly, and don't get me wrong, but we are overreacting big time. They are definitely using it to test some kind of social experiment. Because when you look at the number and you take the population of the world and then you go country by country and so on, the debt, the debt, the, how do you say that again? Like even in French, I don't remember. It's um, the, the proportion of death oh. from the contamination, it's below 1%. Mm -hmm. 
And this is worldwide and almost everywhere. Maybe the only, uh, it's Uwan and uh, Cremo in Italia. These are the only two places that reach 12 to 14% death rate of people hospitalized, by the way. Because you have to take care of the numbers because what the numbers are presenting, if you do a ratio, it have to be very important. Because when they say 12% of Italian passed away of the disease, they calculate it on all those infected, not all those hospitalized, okay? So that's a huge number. But here in Quebec, when they say four people dead, they made a number out of the 45 people hospitalized. So of course it looked huge, but if you calculate it on all the people who are positive, like tested, so, so they cannot like, I'm, I'm telling you, if it was Ebola, Ebola, it's a death rate of 55%, I think. Correct me if I don't remember my, because I don't want to navigate into my screen uh, as I keep receiving uh, low uh, internet uh, warning. Mm -hmm. So, so, I mean, like for me, it's okay. I said like, okay, I'm taking it seriously, individually speaking, taking care of people, uh, staying at all most of possible and keeping my distance and so on. Okay. But collectively and socially, something is wrong. It's, it's because again, that doctor from the BBC and there's another one also uh, in France, they say like, uh, usually as epidemiologists, we will concentrate on those sick and the spreading, that fear of spreading, if you contain those people who are sick. And because I don't, I, this virus has been there for the last 15 years. Now they say it's a novel, and they will use that, that word. It's a novel coronavirus. That's not, and they put 19, but they have like COVID-2 in 2002. And I mean, hold on a second. It's like we have the flu every year. We have like, is it? And a lot of people, I saw it. I saw that people are, yes, but what were their condition before they get it? Mm -hmm. at, at right now, I didn't see with my search yesterday, no one really healthy and even those who were really healthy or sporty that get it and been hospitalized they retrieve from it they don't die so that's the thing so we have been told that even myself i'm in good health i still have to lose weight but that's not an issue i don't think because my immune system it's on steroids my blood everything like i've got enough uh, white and red globules. so so i'm not saying like i'm superman but i mean like Okay, I could get it. I admit it. Like I could get a regular flu or like I could get a pneumonia, but I will survive it. Now what they're saying most of, in most places, now if you get it, whatever you are, 45, 20, 12, or 75, you might die. Oh, I scare you. But you so can that's... do the same with the regular flu. Hmm? They say the same for the regular flu. You might but... die if you get the flu. Mm-hmm. Yes, you could. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but now that the way they, they, they portray it is you need to stay home, not to spread it. Okay, I said like, but we don't know who has it. So you see the, and with the numbers, when you look at the map, and when you look at the message, it's like this. It's completely disproportionate. Because now what they're creating is People who are on unemployed, a lot of small business will go bankrupt. So it's and you and even people are embarking, and even myself, because at some point, especially in my business agility kind of network, everybody is talking about like, oh, let's create a new world, let's create a new kind of market, let's create new money, let's create. Oh, hold on a second. I'm all for change. I'm a transformator. I'm an enabler of, of change. This is why I'm doing Agile. But right now, what I don't like is the lie and the using uh, or the manipulation. They use something to force things on a group of people. And the group of people is us. Hmm. So do you think that the quarantine is overblown? Yes and no. Because again, when we when they say Singapore has less cases because they close their border quickly, 
I said, okay. And they concentrate on those uh, little numbers of people, but I don't know, Singapore is a monarchy, right? Mm -hmm. and, and Russia, it's a kind of a auto, auto, autocratic federation. So I don't think they will, but again, it's Russia who's sending doctors in Italia right now with Cuban and even Chinese. 300 Chinese doctor arrived in Milan, Milan, Milano yesterday. So yeah, to help uh, because right now the epicenter is Italia. This is amazing. But again, there's more people at risk in Italia. And they, of course, they didn't listen to these uh, kind of quarantine and so on like uh, because this is the latin way of you know like oh, you will for forbid me to have my three o'clock espresso in milan are mm -hmm. you crazy mm -hmm. and i want to kiss my girlfriend even if she's sick you know so i mean like i'm not being racist here it's like even my italian friend told me that like but look at that the the three latin country france spain and italia they're the one who are into big lockdown because they didn't listen. It's but not it's, because we didn't listen. It's because we have free will. It's interesting too because there, I feel that there are cultures that are way more, um, like almost like passionate. The touching, the like movement, and like body. I just you know. So I mean, it just increases the contact. Yeah, so, yeah. Like like contact. the French, they need they need. On a besoin de trois bisous. Oui, and kiss I each other the, even between I men. The bisou. I do living here, my little. Actually, if you wanna, if you wanna add a good laugh, Paul Taylor. I don't know if you know Paul Taylor. He's a British guy living in Paris, and he's doing a. You, you could find it on YouTube. Usually, uh, the hashtag is franglais. He's doing a show, and he's pissing off the French, and he's, he's he's amazing, because he speaks French, English, and Spanish with no accent. This oh, bastard. Mm. Yeah, no accent. So, so he switch. He do a show like, and he's laughing at the French, and uh, especially avec. Uh, I don't know, Chris, if you'll be uh, enough good in French with that. But say, uh, when the French say "je t'emmerde," je t'emmerde. Yeah, je t'emmerde. In English, it doesn't make sense because it's like I will put you full of shit. I mean, like, <laughs> I don't, I don't get it. So, <laughs> so you make a, you make a show. You make a fifteen minutes out of that, and bo and Franklish. It's amazing. Mm. I mean, if you'd like to laugh, especially if you're a bilingual, yeah. <laughs> it will be like, et puis avec vos bisous, là, qu'est-ce que vous faites, la putain? It's just crazy. Okay. <laughs> and me, I'm British. I don't want to do la bise. C'est la bise. They call it la bise. I don't want to do la bise. Just like handshake. No, 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 no. They uh -huh. all want to hug me like if I was a, if I was a whole time friend. And <laughs> so, yeah. but of course, yeah, of course, like this. Um, but it's cultural. It's not. It's not, this is why I said like it's no a racist comment. It's like it's cultural. It's it's funny. It's like this, and uh, yeah. And in Mexico, it's a big mystery why it's so low case. It's I think they reach a thousand in five weeks, mm. and us we reach a thousand. Of course, the people will say ah oh, because they don't test. They don't have a good healthcare system in Mexico. Yeah, Peru either, and Peru has like thirty five thousand cases. So. <laughs> yeah it's hard it's hard to tell i feel like uh you can only just model it on what other countries have been doing and i i heard that the united states is starting to pass italy as the epicenter like they're becoming essentially the new epicenter which isn't yeah. helped by the president who i just saw i was trying to get everyone back to work by easter which is like <laughs> little over two weeks from now so it's like yeah some of that stuff that <clears throat> um it's different messaging that people don't know what to trust what to do and i feel like yeah one of the main things of the quarantine that people talk about is to flatten the curve and to not have this huge spike in cases but that still means that if the curve is flattened it could take longer like you're still going to have a lot of people infected and it's going to happen potentially in like waves going forward so at least that buys time to build a vaccine and produce it and all sorts of stuff but 
yeah, the economic damage is it's it's already done. Yeah, and it's going to be worse and worse, especially by the end of the month when everyone's rent may or may not be due and all of their other bills may or may not be due. I feel like that's going to be an even bigger reckoning for some people. And uh, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be interesting. And Especially, I'm sure that the number uh, didn't change because uh, as an entrepreneur, and I, I'm not doing cold calling to reach my client, but I, I, I do some research, you know, and, and where should I go um, publicize my services and so on. So I have access with uh, the Chamber of Commerce to uh, Statistic Canada uh, numbers, like true or raw numbers of economic and social condition and most of the uh, Canadian area, the, the United States, I do the same with the ISS. And uh, what, what, what I read, uh, that was like last November for the number from 2016 up to 2019. Amazingly, they, in Canada, uh, the, the average uh, medium of uh, small business, corporation, people like you and I, the, the, the depth, rate is 167 percent which mean like on average a canadian and as i said like corporation personal well, if 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 your salary is one hundred thousand dollars you own 127 dollars so that means that a lot of people on average they don't have even like two weeks in advance mm. as you said mm. like at the end of the month but a lot of people are already at the end of the month. Yeah, they're living at or above their means instead of below them. So that, that's kind of crazy because um, and, and small business is even worse because in the last two years and most center in Canada, the economy was not that well. A lot of people think, oh, that was well. No, no, that was not well. As you see, the, the gas, even the gasoline, the, it's 80 cents a liter right now. Mm -hmm. Five here in Edmonton. How much? Sixty-five. Sixty-five. Can you imagine? But it's because why? Because you're a producer, then you already have a rebate. Or well, it dropped from ninety something in like a week. It went like down thirty cents. Hmm. And ninety something was low. Yeah. Yeah. And and what made me think, like, when I had my meeting with my financial advisor last Thursday, what we discussed, like, uh, objectively is right now it's the real economy that it. Because in 2008, that was the financial economy. And this is the croony thing. This is the fake thing. I mean, like, of course, it could affect the real economy. But now the reason the market is crashing is because of a lack of confidence. Mm. And they don't invest in all those shops who are closing, who are forced to close. There's no more production or non-essential production, they said. But, um, well, so, and the productivity. So, of course, what I like about that crisis, guys, especially on the point of view of a business agility, of an enabler of change, is it spark people to rethink the way we do economy, the way that we exchange things, the way, to, the, the way we work together. I'm not talking about remote work only. No, 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 no. About all these kind of, of production, consuming and stuff. And all those people in debt, they will face. Uh, very, because me, on a personal level, I have six months reserve. Okay, I could pay my rent for six months. I could eat pretty well for six months. I could pay everything, like the, the basic stuff. And even go out for six months. But of course, I cannot go out, so I will save money. <laughs> yeah. I'm laughing, but it's not, it's not I, I'm also really empathic for all those or the numbers that I looked at that they are have to pay their credit card, their loan, their what have you, and they don't actually receive revenue right now. Or, yeah, of course, uh, they will have employment uh, and some kind of measure, but it's uh, for me, it's Every crisis, it's and, and again, and the Greek word for crisis is temi, and you just teach me that. Uh, do I pronounce well? Sift? sift. It's a sift. Okay, well, because you te temise, right? In hmm? French, right? To what? sift. 
In French, you said tamiser. Tamiser, oui. Yeah, so like in a sieve, to sift. To sift, exactly. So the, the, the Greek word for crisis, it's, if I translate it in English for you, Chris, it's, it's a sieve. So okay. not everybody will, will go through. And this is, for me, that's, that's a pain. If I just, because I'm not, I'm not alone in this society and so on. So that, that's a pain for me to see that a lot of people, even right now, after three weeks, they're already broke. Mm -hmm. So even if, yes, we could be positive and creative of, of doing things like the thing I want to do on Thursday, it's hopefully uh, other agile because right now in my community, I don't get it. I saw the real estate community getting together, doing Zoom and stuff and talk about how they will finance uh, purchase of complex and how they will uh, with all those construction sites now shutting down and all the housing and condo will not be delivered as promised. And so they, they, they gather together. But me and my community, even on LinkedIn, I try to see zero. It's mm -hmm. all selfishness. And I'm so sad to see the business agility community. And I don't care if I put it on my Agile Launch channel because it has to be said. It's, it's amazing that all of my competitor, instead of getting together like the real estate industry doing, with the Chamber of uh, Real Estate of Quebec, putting all the people, all the competitors together to think about things. Now, us in Agility, that we are praising for collaboration, we are praising for interaction. No, it's everyone in this corner. Mm -hmm. Because we realize that as consultant, we were being so much dependent of the fear of not changing. And now we don't have choice to change. Yeah. They do. I've been, it's been three weeks that I tried to call out my Agile community. And even in private, I'll share something with you, Chris, that I was really disappointed of a reaction of someone we know. It was a bit like, what? Because I post mm -hmm. something on, on, on Facebook. Actually, my agent posts something on Facebook and it's been like slap about it. So I don't understand because business agility people, us, the enabler and the sparking of change in a regular time, we should be there to facilitate and help you. This is what I'm trying to achieve with those check in It's a check-in right. of, how are you? Are you feeling good? Do you need something? Do you need help? Da, 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 da. And just, just gather together like this. I, I started like two weeks ago. And uh, mostly it's, uh, I, I saw no one in my field of business agility gathering there. It's my great friend, Crystal, who is uh, one of the greatest nutritionists out there, uh, oh healing people. God. It's my cousin uh, who is uh, à la retraite qui, qui se joint à moi. J'ai eu quelques amis. De, uh, okay, I'm glad because if I'm doing it for a couple of people who would like to share, but I'm just amazed that in the agility circle, they are doing things like selfish need to, to serve their ass, to save their work or their world like after. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I heard nothing of them. When I send an email, those who interact with me, are in every field but enterprise agility or business agility. Hmm. <laughs> Do you know why that might be the case? Is it just because like it's easier to talk and not walk or um, do you think they're swamped with work right now trying to adjust to these new changing realities of work? Like, can you, uh, yeah, if you were to armchair psychologist diagnose the problem. <laughs> but actually, I didn't, uh, I, I'm in contact with maybe two or three people who work in the field of uh, business agility or transforming the world of work, let's say. And um, one of them, actually, she's not even agility. She's more like in uh, human resource slash uh, changing things. And she's very busy as long as they still accept the remote thing. So that's another thing. Even in this time of crisis, it's not everyone who are catching up and do, doing um, a training or a workshop with Zoom. Mm -hmm. Actually, Chris, with your tool at Pickle, because let's advertise you a bit. With your yeah. tool, 
And with the will of a guy like me and that woman that I'm talking about, like that we are willing to bring anything that will require like um, on-site, in-person type of thing, that we could show the world that, and even before that crisis, we were talking about it, you know, like using mm. this. So a lot of people talk remote, remote, remote. And this is me for me is the paradox because I've been called a purist of agility because I didn't like necessarily do Zoom training before mm -hmm. because we'd like to interact and especially in, in technology, a lot of people are, they need to escape their computer. <laughs> right. So an online training for people who would like for a software development team is not necessarily a good idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so that's probably why all of the sudden all my colleague, good or bad, I don't care. It's completely a silent radio. Mm. We don't see them and they don't take this opportunity because me, when I see on my LinkedIn feed, because that's the only social network I'm really hard. Because if you see Agile Lounge anywhere else, Instagram, Pinterest, it's not me. It's it's it's, it's my marketing agent or it's, it's not me. Don't think I'm... Finalement, c'est moi qui ai des cours gratuits. C'est toi qui as des cours gratuits? Oui, voilà. <laughs> If you follow. So, mais, mais c'est ça. So, even my lawyer is giving free advice to any entrepreneur right now on webinar. I'm, I'm doing like some session, I told you before, like either at 50% off or completely free. Depend, because if it's my base clientele of startup and entrepreneur, I do it for free. But if, if it's a big corporation like a bank, sorry, guys, you're going to pay <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, and they and they don't agree with that. Could you imagine that? Okay, so we cancel your contract. I said, "F you." Hmm. I won't do it for free, Desjardins. You hear me? No, I won't. Well, yeah, I think I don't know. It's a good opportunity right now, but you, ha I do. I've seen that even like with, let's say, celebrities, whatever, offering, you know, free. Just fun stuff, free cooking, like there's people doing free master classes. Like I think it's an opportunity to build community, but it's also an opportunity to plant seeds for mm -hmm. future business. Like I'm hosting my next gathering online and opened it up free, where normally I do them in person for a max of 13 people. And I was actually thinking I'm actually going to do a separate group for my regular people so that we still have the intimacy and still have that free for this month. But then moving forward, it's an opportunity to adapt and to grow and for people to possibly explore my business and what I do in a way mm -hmm. that wasn't available before. And then hopefully people will be interested in jumping in in the future, especially when we get back into the in-person. Or it's an opportunity to possibly host events like that on Zoom as a different source of income in the future also. So. Exactly. No, I agree with you. They're, they're not going to survive right now in the businesses. It's like you have to adapt or you're going to, yeah. If you're able to, there's obviously some businesses out there that just can't. Because right now the funny thing is when I saw a post of someone saying like, oh, I would like to do this because I have more time right now or uh, is there anybody out there with a creative mind that would? So of course, so <clears throat> I'm going, and I could be a facilitator because that's what that's every agile coach are actually forgetting their first and foremost duty is to gather people together and facilitate any session. Mm -hmm. They all put things onto training, training, training. No, no, no. Training is one thing. I, I'm not a trainer. I'm an entrepreneur and I've been doing uh, all these techniques of agility for years. Now I, I could be a coach. Yes, I could coach you about it. I could facilitate stuff. But the thing is, the key is facilitation. Mm -hmm. So to all my colleagues out there that will watch this replay, instead of whining that you lost your contract, because especially the corporation don't want to pay for virtual stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, I'm agreeing with you, Crystal. I do yeah. a lot of things for free, even in a regular time. Yeah. If you go to my website, you could have your first one hour of consultation for free. Mm -hmm. And basically in my uh, market, it's worth 150 an hour. Yeah. I'm giving it for free. Even before coronavirus, I was already there. Yeah. 
doing some kind of Zoom stuff uh, so for people and, and helping my client here in Montreal, dealing with team in Singapore, Shanghai, and Bangalore. And uh, I, I was one of the precursor in Montreal of doing remote agility. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. But in the meantime, so, so that's why, so, so that's just, this is funny. It's just me. I don't want to do an editorial on this, but, and I'm not complaining. I'm, I'm smiling. The thing is, I, I take this opportunity right now to this live and that will be a replay. Please guys do something. I'm inviting you. It's been a month, two months. I'm inviting you to their real agile and their real agile. It's applying those values and principle that we all have since the revolution of 2001. And now it's taking that crisis and you just hide yourself. I don't see any of my colleagues on LinkedIn. All the entrepreneurs I speak with are in all different kind of environment and they try to get the most out of it like you, Crystal. Mm -hmm. And I can't wait to be there on Saturday. Have you seen I register? Uh, I know. I'm like, ah, by the way, it's like the first time I'm doing it. So it should be interesting. Mm -hmm. But also I like, so when we talk about, like, I believe in the whole role of not teaching a workshop or teaching a, like a class. I always look at it too as facilitating. And I always think about it as I'm not necessarily there to hammer home an agenda. I'm there to guide an experience. Well, and that's where, you know, I feel that that's why I have success when I do workshops or circles. Cause I, it's, it's about the people that are there too. I'm not there just to, I might have knowledge, but you want, to guide the experience and let help people tap into their own whatever, but you're just a guide. I mean, that's what I think makes a, a good facilitator too. So. I agree. What do you think, Chris? Yeah, I, um, I totally agree. Letting people find the answers themselves. They're going to accept them a lot better. And, um, and yeah, just try and I think people are more engaged when they're learning from each other as well. And so having ways of doing that, so you're not coming across as the one point of uh, knowledge and everyone listen to me, but yeah, being that facilitator that sparks conversations and especially knows what questions to ask, I think is the most important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, that comes down to also like leadership styles, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so, yeah and th this is like since last year this is the big oof right now in, in, in our field of transforming the world of work uh it's exactly uh, transforming a manager to a leader yes mm -hmm. so there's a lot of work there to do and uh, all of a sudden um all these people are mostly quiet right now and i try to gather them whether through here the checked in whether through uh, some kind of a free space now I creating my, it's, it's like my, after three, four weeks, what I'm gonna do on Thursday, and I hope we could do it together, Chris, with your great tool of Pickle. Yeah. And we'll see if, if people insert a call because uh, for me, it's the, it's the the 15 call in two weeks that I try to do. And I even like call people that I know uh, right on the phone and say like, can, could we gather together and start thinking the past coronavirus? This is why the, the title of my event is this. It's self-manage because agility, it's proposing self-organized and self-managed team. This is the time. Mm -hmm. This is the time to, to do this, to do this, not talk about it, but to see uh, how could we actually propose our, our entrepreneur out there, our client, our teams, our organization to really jump into this. I think this is the time. This is the way that when we say like this crisis should not go to waste because no. if, if people are just holding because uh, the premier logo yesterday in Quebec said like oh, on va se mettre on hold we're going to be on hold yeah no 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 don't put yourself on hold take that time to reflect to go to the storyboard so this is why i create this virtual open space on thursday afternoon yeah to try to see and to 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 again i'm 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 i'm, I'm crying <laughs> I'm crying to my community of Agilists, where are you? The only email that I saw is, oh, we can solve the spark that changed Montreal and Toronto. And we'll see you next year. Uh, no, 
you could have done that into another way because agile is all about other ways of doing things well adapting and being exactly evolving and being flexible are you an agilist my dear i think mm -hmm. i might secretly be one i yes because you talk exactly <laughs> and by the way we are march 24th today so let's say i to my coach who taught me to talk like this to think like this to be like what you just said his name was mike beetle he was one of the cautionary of this revolutionary agile way of thinking back in 2001 and he's been shot and killed in chicago two years ago today today yeah mm -hmm. by the 23rd it was yesterday yes okay. so i just make me realize because that's as you said like we facilitate something but and agile is is not something new it's just common sense is that the way in english to say uh, the bon sens the common sense bon sens. yeah exactly because you see you, you you don't even practice it crystal and you have the mindset the language mm -hmm. because yeah. agile it's an adjective it's not something you buy it's a, we use a sporty type of way of agility, but the thing is this is being flexible. Your mind should be flexible. Well, I, I, I think of it as almost like a, a river or a stream, right? Like water, mm -hmm. being like water. And just because you, like water can be really powerful, but it can also be very gentle, but you're always moving around things and going with the flow. Yep. And yeah. You're amazing because that's one of my workshop that I use the value stream, value stream of, and I use this, I have a map that I could not show you right now, but I have a map where you see a river or a fleuve, like we say in yeah. French, the river with is affluent. So every stream of water are different value that came into your main stream of water to go to the bay. Mm. And this is why the expression in uh, American business, customer at bay. Mm. Huh. It came from there. And you don't want and you don't want a red ocean. You want a blue ocean. Because if at the end of your project or the delivery of your solution or your services that you created to please your customer, the bay is red, it means that you kill a lot of people to get there. Mm -hmm. So this is why in, in business, if you heard like blue ocean and red ocean, that's the outcome. How bad was the management of your delivery of your project through value stream? Mm -hmm. So the red ocean is, is not good because that means like your employee are not pleased, the worker, the, those who produce are not pleased and your customer will just have like, my goodness. The water is so dirty. So the flow of water is so dirty because we lost a lot of people on the way. <laughs> mm. Yeah. So, um, so I like uh, Crystal. You uh, you could be one of my coach at the Agile Lounge because you get the language, you get the 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 vision. It's my. It's what I practice. It's what I live. You see. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. No much action on YouTube. I was just like going about my three screens. And for Facebook, I know nothing of Facebook. So I don't even know if people could interact there. I just have the screen here. Yeah. Okay. Hey, if I'm going to have to hop off pretty soon, I've got another. What? Yeah, but I think, I think that's that for today. Are you happy? Yeah. Are you happy? Yeah, I mean, I'm okay. I'm all right. I'm I'm glad. I'm glad that you you're here, Chris. I thought uh, even before the crisis, I didn't hear you a lot. I, I know I was busy and so on. So I'm yeah. glad you you're back. And well, I feel like the crisis will be a good the opportunity what? of reconnecting with people as well. With yes. uh, a lot more free time, people are going to be more reachable through phone. So. I, I think the amazing good. thing is I did that today at 2 p.m. to please my European colleague and friend. And everyone was WhatsApping me saying like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm busy this afternoon, uh, but the, tonight, because for them it's seven o'clock. I was like, what? Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> See, only can... one person I can agree because uh, that was the only time they could talk to their teacher because they're doing a master right now. Okay. 
But I said like, guys, it's seven o'clock. Mm -hmm. Seven o'clock for you. Anyway. <laughs> well, you'll, you're going to find that sweet spot. The sweet spot. Uh, hmm, I think there's no sweet spot right now. <laughs> Um, and if I look at the number of last week, it was, I think I did that at 3 p.m. So like right now it, it would have start and 3 p.m. It's like kind of eight o'clock, but I, I mistaken because I thought like Europe was also on daylight saving time and they're not. So that's why I miscalculate uh, the plus right. six instead of plus five. And I don't know if it's this weekend, they're going to go to daylight saving time. I don't know. So, uh, mm. So, uh, so that was a mistake too, but uh, nevertheless, um, the sweet spot right now, uh, a lot of people here from Montreal, they told me, oh, I cannot attend because I'm working. Okay, okay. So that's good for you. You're working. So, um, so yeah, today was a very special day for me. The, all the communication that I received, I was like, it seemed like yesterday, the prime minister of Quebec said, everybody shut down. But now you're telling me you're busy and meeting. Okay. All right. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> <laughs> that was just funny. I prefer to laugh about it than be concerned. So um, but tomorrow will be 7 p.m. Uh, Montreal time. We'll see. I'm doing it like this, like Monday right. 7 to so. We'll see. Best and thing. Thursday, I take the risk of doing my open space at 2 p.m. Maybe it will change for 4 p.m. I don't know yet, but... Um, if I could uh, call you tomorrow, Chris, yeah, we talked about it. What what time will be uh, the best for you? Tomorrow, uh, sometime in the afternoon would work well. Okay. I'm just uh, busy. Anytime after 1.30 will be good. Perfect. Because me, I should have a workshop, but the client, he never get back to me. So that's another thing too. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very funny that uh, you take in advance and you know that, especially one of my clients, she's coming back from Ecuador. I don't have any, so I don't expect from her because she should be in Quito till tonight. Mm -hmm. That I agree. But all the other collaborators in our team, I saw they catch my email, but they mm -hmm. don't call me back. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I can understand like everybody could have their issue, but we should have more time, as you right. said. Like, so communication, no matter what. Yeah. To just reach out or like what's going on or yeah. say I can't attend or I have this shit happening. Yeah, something like but this is not just coronavirus era. It's I it seems for me sometimes like I don't just understand like um and I was expecting more actually I got some more communication in a certain sense since that crisis. But the professional that I have, I deal with, I will say like 20% of them are bad apple. They don't, they are not just there. So I mean, I, I have an appointment. So anyway, Chris, we're going to make the positive. After 1.30, I'll call you. I just want to make sure that I do. Uh, yes. All right. Perfect. Awesome. Sounds awesome. Good. So thank you for being there. Yeah. Thank you. you for putting it on and it's good to meet you crystal and danielle and danielle who was quiet so danielle stay oui. there rest là, danielle, je goodbye <laughs> no, rest là, danielle. <laughs> je, je je i'm white and black <laughs> <laughs> no, mais reste là, on va, on va se parler. okay so All right. ciao. All right. we'll talk to you tomorrow yes Or thursday well, do as you want but i'll be there on saturday Yes. I reserve and I didn't give donations. So. What? Yes, I did. Didn't receive it? I don't know. I didn't look. Yeah, I, I went through. On anything. <laughs> Actually, you even bride brought me to your PayPal and I send money through PayPal. So. Oh, my love. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, and I, I don't. And I was expecting that you or your sister will will send that Zoom link because I, when I, I receive even bride, even bride says I have to be in Edmonton. <laughs> Oh, an address at 209 something in Minton. So. I didn't know how to. Um, <laughs> it asks you for a physical location. Let me just uh, cut the feed now because uh, we are still live on Facebook. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>
So just want to cut the feed. Okay. So Facebook people, take care. See you tomorrow, 7 p.m. Okay, 7 p.m.